Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Friday, August 4th, 2023. And today was well, going to be one of my favorite days, National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. I love chocolate chip cookies, homemade chocolate chip cookies, Chips Ahoy, any kind of chocolate chip cookie I can get. I love those things. So happy chocolate chip cookie day. Today we're going to continue looking here in Second Timothy chapter number 4. And I encourage you, if you haven't watched or listened to yesterday's episode, that you go back and take a look at that, because we looked at the first five verses of Second Timothy chapter 4, and we saw an example of the good works that we are called to do back here in chapter 3 and verse number 17. And I, I won't rehash everything we talked about, but we need to go back and take a listen to that or watch it if you haven't yet. And today we're going to take a look at verses 6 through 8, where we're going to see the results of of doing those good works. Because, you know, let's, let's face it, in our world today, you know, it's difficult to do those good works. It's hard to, to maintain sometimes your life as a Christian. And it takes work, and it takes sacrifice. And it's a work and a sacrifice that many of us are not are not willing to do. But there is great reward in that. And we're going to see because even if you are doing your good works, sometimes you kind of get tired of it. You know, you don't see results or or people start making fun of you or or whatever. And sometimes you just need a little motivation to keep going. Well, let this episode be your motivation to keep doing the good works that you are equipped to do. Let's read it here, starting in verse number 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Now remember in the first six verses here, the first five verses, Paul is teaching Timothy about the good works and the charge that he is giving him to preach the word and why he needed to to preach the word and some things he needed to look out for and things you and I need to look out for in this life as well. And then we get down here to verse number six, and he kind of flips the table a little bit because he's going from giving Timothy instruction on what to do to preparing Timothy for his departure. And by looking at his departure, we could see the results of a life that was lived doing the good works and doing the things that he was called to do. He starts off in verse number five or verse number six. He says, for I am now ready to be offered. And to be quite honest with you, when I looked at that, when I was studying this, I was scratching my head and said, what's Paul being offered about? What's he talking about here? And as I was doing some studying here, I had discovered that in Numbers chapter 15 and in Numbers chapter 18, we can learn that a cup of wine would be poured out following the sacrifice of a bull, a ram, or a lamb. It symbolized the end of the offering. So what Paul is essentially saying here is that my life, I lived my life as a sacrifice, as an offering to God. And now the offering is over. Now the sacrifice is over, and we're getting ready to symbolize that suffering, or by that, that ending of that, by pouring out that wine. Remember, Paul wrote in, in Romans 12, 1, one of my favorite verses of Scripture. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Friends, that is exactly what Paul did each and every day of his life that we study after his conversion in Acts chapter 9. 
from Acts chapter 9 through the rest of the book of Acts pretty much chronicles the life of Paul, his missionary journeys, the things that he did for God, the things that he suffered for God. And you can see how he lived his life as a sacrifice for God. And too many of us today don't want to live our life this way. We don't want to give ourselves fully to God. We don't want to sacrifice ourselves for God. But yet if we read on here, he says, holy, acceptable unto God. And then listen to this part, which is your reasonable service. What Paul is saying is in comparison to everything that God has done for you, it's your reasonable service to offer yourself to God, to make yourself available to God. The only way to grow as a Christian, the only way to become the person that God wants you to be is if you start being that living sacrifice and you start living for him, you start doing what he's called you to do. It's a sacrifice for your pastor to get up on a Sunday morning and preach from the word of God. It's a sacrifice for your worship leader to lead in worship. It's a sacrifice for your Sunday school teacher to 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 teach your class. It's a sacrifice for your neighbor to pray for you when you ask for prayer. Friends, the fact is we need to make sure that we make ourselves available to God and his calling. And when you know what your calling is, it's important to make sure that you, you sacrifice your wants, your desires to do what God's called you to do. I said this illustration yesterday. I'm going to say it again because it fits again. You can count on one hand the amount of times that I did a book report in school because I have a tremendous fear of talking in front of people. But yet God's called me to preach his word, and I'm going to sacrifice my, my, my fears to do what God has called me to do. And Paul says he's, he's ready to be poured out. He says, and the time of my departure is at hand. In other words, his, his life is about up. And then in verse number six, number seven, he gives us three statements here. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. You remember most of you probably are too young for most of these, and I only remember seeing, seeing videotape of most of these. But some of the greatest boxing matches you'd ever seen would be between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. The Thriller in Manila, I think it was called. You know, that was before my time. But for many people, they would say that that was the greatest boxing match that ever happened. Well, inside each one of us, each and every day, we go through the same basic thing. We're battling evil. We're battling our sinful desires. We're battling our, our, our sin nature. And Paul is saying, I have fought a good fight. In other words, he has conquered that. Then he says... I have finished my course. I have finished my course. In other words, Paul is saying that, that the path that God had for me, I've completed that. And earlier here in the book of Philippians, chapter number 3, verses 13 and 14, Paul says, Brethren, I count myself to have... At, not, let me start that over again. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended... But one, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul is telling this church at Philippi that he is forgetting those things which were behind. He's forgetting all his past accomplishments. He's forgetting his, his pedigree. He's forgetting everything that, that once meant anything to him. He's forgetting those things and reaching forth to take to take the prize of the high calling of God. He's reaching forth, pressing on, going as much as he can. He says, I have finished my course. Paul pressed on, reached out, kept going, didn't get cumbered down by battling his sin nature, kept moving forward, kept doing the good work until he could finally say, I have finished my course. And then he finishes it up with saying, I have kept the faith. If you look at, at, at the book of Acts and from chapter 9 on, where we start really getting into the Apostle Paul, you can see where he was stoned, where he, he went through many a few shipwrecks, where he was in prison. And in all those times, 
And in all those trials he went through, his faith stayed whole. He never, he never disregarded his faith. He never renounced his faith. But it seems like today, as soon as something goes wrong, we're ready to renounce that faith. We're ready to get away from it. We're ready to distance ourselves from it. I was watching a video just a little while ago. I told, I mentioned before, a couple weeks ago, I think, about this guy that sits in a college campus and answers people's questions. And and this English girl was saying, you know, you yourself said repent, but even if we repent, we still have to suffer. So what's the point of repenting? And he had said, well, point of, of repenting is for the Christian when we do go through those times of suffering, we know that we could trust in God for the outcome, and that makes those times of suffering easier. Paul went through probably worse things than you and I are ever going to experience in our lifetime, and Paul stayed true to the end. Question is, is your faith going to make it to the end? And then in verse number 8, he says he's going to give us, he's, he's, we're going to see the reward, his reward, and our reward for completing our course. He says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. Friends, one day we're going to get before God and we're going to get that crown of righteousness for the person that's put their faith in Jesus, for the person who is offering themselves a sacrifice each and every day, for the person that is reaching out and and trying to do what God has called them to do to complete the course. We're going to get that crown, and we're going to be able to lay it at Jesus' feet, just like Paul was able to, to see that, that day coming, and he's now experienced that. One day each of us will be able to do that if you've given your life to Christ. In Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, Paul says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What's Paul saying? He's saying he knew with all the sacrifices he was going through, with all the trials he was going through, with all the temptations he was going through, he knew that God was able to keep his faith secure and his salvation secure until the very end. And God's going to do the same for you. So how about it? Have you given your life to Jesus yet? Have you accepted his free gift of salvation? If not, what are you waiting for? Don't wait till it's too late. Accept him today. Confess your sins. And ask Jesus to become Lord of your life. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word. And allow God's word to get into you. And then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Well, John, I want to hand down to you some family heirlooms. Really? Did you hear that, dear? Grandpa has some gifts for us. That's nice, dear. So what do you have for me? Well, I have this Bible. It's been in the family since our relatives came over on the Mayflower in the 1600s. Wow, that's got to be worth a lot. Hon, what do you think we can get for this? I'll call the appraiser tomorrow. What else do you have? Well, uh... I have these wedding bands owned by your great-great-grandparents. Are they gold? Oh, no, they're silver. They were way too poor to afford gold. Oh. What do you think, dear? Garage sale? Garage sale. What's this book? Uh, well, that's the history of our family going back to the 1400s. I've been working on this for the last 47 years. Well, that's nice. Hun? Attic? Yeah. Well, thanks for coming over, Grandpa. Come again. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus. What have you done with God's gift? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com.